uh, with the beautiful property that he has here. He has chosen to go with what they call a horizontal dug closed loop system. Basically what you see here is you're seeing a series of pipes that are inserted into the ground, buried about roughly six feet into the earth. Uh, they are filled with a uh, ethyl alcohol uh, and water solution, about 25% ethyl alcohol to water solution. And this circulates in and out of this ground, again about six feet deep, going into the home's uh, heat pump system and this is the means of heat transfer and cooling transfer for the geothermal system that's being installed here. Um, on the inside of the home uh, this fluid again goes into the system it goes into the, uh, the heat exchanger and from there it's a forced air system that will provide heating and cooling for the home. The uh, closed loop system here the horizontal that you see inside the trench very efficient system. Um, basically, um, a lot of folks want to understand how you take a cold fluid from the ground and bring it into a heat pump system and uh, create heat or release heat to the ground for cooling purposes. Well, this particular application here is designed for a low loop temperature of about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So the question is, how do I take a 32 degree loop temperature fluid, bring it into a heat pump and make 95 degree air coming out of my vents in my house. What actually heats and cools your home and the efficiency factor in your, in your heat pump machine or in geothermal is, is the refrigerant itself. So this is designed at about a 32 degree loop uh, for the winter time. When a 32 degree loop goes into the home, it'll actually add about 3 degrees of temperature to the refrigerant as it becomes a hot gas and then will then go to your heat pumps evaporator and create heat of about 90 to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit which is very comfortable and can heat a house very comfortably. Here we are at the, uh, the manifold entrance where all of the loops that come from this horizontal field they enter into a what we call a two pipe reverse return manifold. So basically you'll see that this is a supply pipe and this one over here is a return pipe. Both of these pipes go through this offset trench and into the basement of the house where it will be connected to a circulator module system that will tie into the heat pump and circulate through these loops. These pipes are all hooked up in a fashion so that they're in this particular application everything is a on the loop field side on the three quarter inch pipe which is all the small pipes you see coming into this one and a half inch manifold header. All of these loops are exactly 600 feet in length extremely critical to make sure that your loops are all 600 feet, that you don't have one loop that's 580, one that's 600, one that's 540. The reason for that is you won't get even circulation through the manifold system going into the house. We want to make sure that we are optimizing the amount of fluid that's going through all the loop and getting all the recovery from the ground that we possibly can here. So <clears throat> these lines again come into this manifold Everyone that supplies out, that goes out first, comes back last on the return header. That's where I came and said the two pipe reverse return in the very beginning. Then these lines are inch and a half, which is enough water or water and fluid volume um, with the um, ethyl alcohol volume. Uh, inch and a half is what we needed on this particular application to carry all the fluid that runs through this loop for the horizontal system. Now the pipes that are coming from the loop field here that go into the two pipe reverse return manifold system, they are tied in with geo stab adapters. Uh, very tight fit, once they're pressed inside, there's you're going to need a Chevrolet pickup truck to pull them apart. After they're underneath the ground, they're, they're well, uh, well buried, sealed, and good forever. Now this is again a horizontal, uh, a horizontal geothermal closed loop system. Um, basically, when you're doing um, a horizontal system, you can see that you need a tremendous amount of land mass in most cases to be able to do a system like this. Um, just to give you a general rule of thumb, if you had a home that was fairly well insulated, insulated that's about 2,500 square feet, um, you would have about what they call roughly a five ton system. Now again, that's not the way to properly size a system, it's a basic rule of thumb to give you a rough idea of 
how to go about the thinking process and what needs to happen to do this. So that's about the size of the home that we're at today. And so this particular application here, um, we are using, again, straight pipe runs in the ground, not what they call slinky loop systems, but straight pipe runs. And we wanted in this particular application to have 600 feet of pipe run um, per ton of equipment. So in this case, we have five independent trenches. All of these trenches are eight foot six wide by 100 feet long in depth. And then the area in which I'm standing is what we call an offset trench where all of the loops come in and tie together. So if you take a look here, uh, you'll see that the amount of land mass that you would need for this type of a trenching system, <clears throat> which uh, this particular job lent itself to quite a bit of open space, beautiful dig, uh, digging soil here. Um, we didn't hit any ledge on this particular instance and I'm, I'm six feet in the ground as we speak. Um, <clears throat> so this particular application here is about 9,000 square feet of area. Uh, that's due to the trenches. Now, sometimes you can take, in, in another way you can look at the horizontal system is if you have, <clears throat> if you have a five, the same particular five ton house, which also could have been done here as well. But in this application here, we could have used, uh, for the same amount of pipe run, we could have used a 55 foot by 100 foot long pit, which means you wouldn't have had trenches. It would have been just one big open pit, much like you're digging a foundation for your home. And then the pipe runs could have been laid in and out of the pit with about 20 inches of separation between those particular loops. Um, if you don't have uh, an application or a piece of property that allows itself to do this, then your choice would be to go with a drilled vertical closed loop system. This particular application had plenty of land mass, so thus they were able to do it very easily. It took roughly about two and a half days to excavate this out, about one day for the, uh, well actually right now about a half a day for the guys to lay the loops down, put everything together. Everything is tied into the building, and as we speak, uh, they are pressure testing and doing what they call a hydrostatic test with water and air to make sure that there's no leaks and off in the distance, the excavator is standing by waiting to backfill. This job was performed by Ultra Geothermal Incorporated. My name is Darren Rice, geosystem designer and field manager here at Ultra Geothermal. Um, the uh, excavation work and the loop work was done in partnering with our company with Comac Pump and Well Company of Kingston, New Hampshire. Um, we do work very closely with Comac when it comes to these jobs. Um, the two of us have really got a good relationship and have a good understanding of what needs to happen with these types of systems and um, always good to have a great working relationship. Hi, I'm Sean. And I'm Ryan. I'm Nick. We're with Comac Pump and Well, just finishing the uh, new installation of the horizontal closed loop project at the Fountain Residence. Well, now we're inside here in Newmarket, and uh, this is basically what you're looking at here, is this is what they call a split geothermal heat pump. Um, the heat pump contains a compressor, condensing section, etc., etc., heat exchanger that gets connected to the loop field. And this is what takes the energy from the ground in the refrigerant circuit and moves it over here to this furnace system. We are going to be tying this geothermal heat pump here into this 
uh, gas furnace. So this is the gas furnace. This is an evaporator coil. So the geothermal heat pump is going to connect from here to this evaporator coil. So your heating and cooling via your refrigerant will be done inside here and we will be using the electronically communicated motor or ECM motor from this as an air handler to put the heating and cooling into the home. Um, now, the gas will not be running during that portion of time when the geothermal is on. The reason why there's a gas furnace here in place of just a straight geothermal heat pump is the gas furnace acts as a forgiving source to power outage. In a typical geothermal heat pump, you'll have backup KW heating, which is an electric strip heating element. So basically what will happen is rather than using if there is an emergency purpose, so to speak, or extremely cold temperatures, then what will happen is if the geothermal for some reason does not keep up with the load in the house at that particular point in time, the gas furnace can now come on and work in conjunction with the geothermal. And that's done strictly through your thermostat. But the better benefit to this system and why this is being done here is generator sizing. So for those of us who live here in New Hampshire know that power outages have been very prevalent in the last five to 10 years. When you install a geothermal heat pump into a, uh, a home and you need a backup generator for to, or size a generator for that uh, geothermal heat pump, the problem you have is you need a very large generator because the compressor runs at what they call a very high locked rotor amperage, thus creates a very large generator to run the house. So in this particular application, when there is a power outage, the generator can be sized much smaller, which is much more cost effective to handle the whole house, and the generator will now work at, with this gas furnace. So when you lose power, the gas furnace now can run off your generator. So a lot of benefit to going with the system. Efficiencies are the same. As long as you match your geothermal heat pump with the proper evaporator section, you achieve the same efficiencies on when you're running your geothermal and the benefit of having the backup gas. The generator company who had originally sized this house for a generator to run the house, including with a standard geothermal, said that the generator was going to need to be between a 22 and 24 kW generator at a cost of about $10,000. But by doing this instead of the straight geothermal and having this as the backup and run off the generator, they were able to reduce it to a 12 kW, 12 kW generator at, at a rate of about three to $4,000. So this is about a $1,000 upgrade versus a packaged unit when you're going to install something like this. Um, however, that's a significant savings or upgrade cost to spending that additional money for the generator. start see things starting to get connected to the geothermal system. I'm here along with Bill from uh, Comac Well and Pump who's uh, working with us doing the uh, closed loop horizontal system here. And uh, basically what we're doing here is we now have the loop field from the outside which is now connected to an indoor purging mantle. Bill here has got a, uh, what we call a pump cart, which is what you use to pump water into that loop field as well as mixed glycol solution. Correct. In this particular case, it's a product called CP Therm, uh, environmentally safe product, and that is all going to be inserted into the loop field through this purging station. So everything here is not in the process with the pump running. Everything's in the process of filling up in the loop field. Eventually Bill's going to have water coming into the building here eventually and then we're going to be able to add glycol and mix it all up and filter it throughout the whole system. Um, not much to explain here other than we have an inlet and an outlet. Uh, a couple of purge ports for the pump cart to come into to, uh, you know, in and out fluid. 
Um, so basically, with this uh, this being shut here, this being shut here, basically you're just filling the field right now. Right, just uh, bleeding all the air out yeah. and uh, adding water to get it full of water. Yeah. And then once we get to that point, then valves will get opened up, and then the fluid solution will then be filled into the heat pump system and connected fully with the field.